Hi there. Welcome to our Lockdown Lookup series of devotions. These devotions have been based off Galatians 5, looking at the fruit of the Spirit. And I'll read it for us again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So today we're looking at the fruit faithfulness. Wikipedia defines faithfulness as the concept of unfailingly remaining loyal to someone or something and putting that loyalty into consistent practice regardless of extenuating circumstances. I tend to agree with that definition. Faithfulness, as we know it, may be exhibited by a husband or a wife who in their exclusive marriage say, well, we'll do certain things. We vow to do certain things. We will not have sexual relations, for example, with others because we want to be faithful to you. So faithfulness can also mean keeping one's promises no matter what the prevailing circumstances. So take, for example, God. God's love to his people, we learn from scripture that God is faithful. God is a covenant-keeping God. He's made certain covenants to his people and he remains faithful to this day. So now let's actually break down um, this definition. So the one side of the definition looks at faithfulness in its textual meaning. So meaning it's this concept of remaining loyal, constant to someone or something and not changing. But there's another side of this definition, which is the literal definition. It is the state of being full of faith in the sense of steady devotion to someone, something or a concept. So in this case, being full of faith, biblically, in biblical terms that is, it is being full of faith to God, knowing and having the steady devotion towards God. So that's faithfulness. I love that definition. And I'm going to break that into two parts. And hopefully that will be an encouragement to you. So let's start with the literal definition of faithfulness. This is the state of being full of faith in the sense of steady devotion towards God. So Hebrews 11, 1 in defining faith in action, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. So the word faith in Greek simply means to trust. It means to have this growing trust in God. Faith is both a gift and also a fruit. In other words, it is one thing to believe in God which is where we get justification. So that's the gift side of faith. We are justified. We have faith. We put our faith in Christ. But it's also another thing to believe God. So there's believing in God and there's believing God. So remember, our struggle with sin fundamentally means we do not believe God. It means we have unbelief. Our unbelief leads to sin. We believe that sin brings joy, so we fail to believe that God will give us pleasure, the pleasure that we desperately want. So sin has an appeal to us. So just to be sure, sin does give pleasure, but temporarily. But what sin robs us of is this kind of joy and peace that we've been looking at in Galatians 5. So in this part of the definition, faith is believing God. It is having this confidence and assurance in God. The Spirit working in us accomplishes this confidence and assurance that we ought to have in God. It is believing God. It produces this ability to remain loyal and trust in God regardless of our present circumstances. Again, God says, The Lord, the Lord, a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. 
That's Exodus 34, 6. So God says of himself that he's abounding in love and he's faithful. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. So God is faithful. Faithfulness is who God is. So the Spirit working in us produces this capacity to remain loyal and trusting to God, believing God no matter what. I find that as a very beautiful outworking of the Spirit. It is always amazing to me when we remain loyal and trusting to God, even when our members do not want to, but when we remain loyal to God and trusting Him, and then He comes up and He shows Himself to be faithful over and over again. I find that amazing. It is amazing for me. It's encouraging my heart to know that the Spirit's intention and work in my life, it is to give me this ability to believe God, which is a hard thing for sinful people. And then the other way I want us to look at faithful, faithfulness, it's in our interpersonal relationships. So again, going back to our definition, faithfulness is this concept of unfailingly remaining loyal to someone or something and putting that loyalty into consistent practice regardless of the extenuating circumstances. So this speaks into our interpersonal relationships. So when spiritual growth takes place in our soul, faithfulness becomes fruitful. This fruit has a direct impact on our relationships with others. It produces this kind of loyalty that in and of ourselves, we cannot make up. We cannot be that. But it is the Spirit's work in us that produces this faithfulness. Faithfulness to the example I've already used of husband and wife. Faithfulness to our employers. Faithfulness to our government. The government has put certain measures to curb the spread of coronavirus. So us staying at home and adhering to what the government has put in place is proving faithful, remaining consistent and constant and remaining loyal to what they've given us, regardless of whether we agree with it or not. And this kind of faithfulness to these interpersonal relationships points back to our ultimate faithfulness to God. So we work so as to please God. So this fruit of the Spirit, faithfulness, looks into our direct relationship with God. So our vertical relationship with God, our vertical faith that we have with God impacts our horizontal outworking of that faith. So our faithfulness is an outworking of this deep-seated trust that we have towards God. So my encouragement to us is to keep walking in the Spirit, for the Spirit produces and accomplishes this elusive fruit of the Spirit. God bless you.